What is good friends, we're here with World Cup Sabella vs Legend of the North, aka Genesis 7. This is his alt, and I assume this is a Scarf land with Genesis switches out as Tornadoes turn 1, scouting for the potential Scarf Stone Edge. Sabella can get up as rocks with the heat turn here, because um, Genesis 7 would predict the potential Taunt, because a lot of Clefable carry Thunder Wave. Uh, Keldeo obviously forces in the Latios, doesn't get the Skull Burn. I think that Specs damage, I'm not 100% sure. And I assume this is going to be Spadef Jirachi with like healing wish support. So Jirachi is like a good switch in here for Genesis 7. I can see Sabella doubling into like Heatran or maybe Kelio predicting the Jirachi. Sabella's team is, um, I assume it's going to be Command Club Fable. And okay, he goes for Ruth and uh, Mega Scissor, obviously. And on Genesis team, I'm not sure yet which is the Scarf, uh, but I could see Rocks Clive and Scarf Landers. Like I could see Scarf Landers on both teams, to be honest. This is kind of tough for Sabella because you don't want to be gonna go into Heatran here on the potential Thunder Wave. So I, <laughs> if you predict the TBF, I could see him going into Landers. The thing is, Landers doesn't really beat. Fable, so yeah, nice double switch into Kelio that would have covered that covered the Heatran play and the Landros play. Really nice double. And now he can fish for Skull, but on the Lari once again. Does he get it this time? He does not get it. Okay, so. <laughs> I mean, Genesis 7 doesn't have headlight control, so doubling around. In the long run, will not be as easy for him as long as only rocks are only in his side at the moment. So he has to get rocks on the other side too. As we see, it's a life of bloody, and that's a Spadef Jirachi eats it up. And I assume he's gonna throw up the rocks here or go for U turn. Yeah, he throws up the rocks. And Sabella is gonna either go for U turn here or. Yeah, I don't think he loses anything from clicking U-turn. I don't think that's the Helmet Landers on the other side, because he already showed that he has Star Rock on Jirachi. I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but this is uh, I recorded this yesterday in the evening. I'm just narrating over this, because I was way too tired, so just left the room and let it record. But it is a free U-turn for Sabella. He does just do that, and he gets in his Heatran or his... Scissor here. I think Heatran, if it's Magma Storm. I don't remember how common a Magma Storm trend is in Auras. Like, I know it's used a lot in Sun and Moon at the moment. But in Auras, I've seen a lot. Um, Torrent Rocks, Toxic trend, and I don't remember if the last one was Magma Storm or Lava Plume. It just goes for Lava Bloom. See, that's what I meant in Auras. It's not that common to see Magma Storm. And he gets a burn on the Kelly, which is a bit unfortunate. But yeah, it's Scald. What can you expect? And burn is uh, busted in Auras. So it's 12%. So this Kelly is going to be worn down. It can't really come in that often with Rocks and Burn, especially on double switches. Because it's going to take 6% plus 12% if it comes in a double switch. Sabella so kept bringing his Latios earlier, so I can see... Maybe a double switch into Tornadus from Genesis part, but he does just go for Hydro Pump. Bloody barely lifts that Specs Pump, Kelly putting out the damage. Ladius can roost here. Pretty free roost, doesn't lose anything from doing that. And Tornadus can click knock off or U turn here. Knock off is probably free because he's not gonna go scissor because these carry heat wave a lot of the time. I assume this is an AV torn. Yeah, they carry like U turn, knock off, heat wave, hurricane. And sometimes they carry superpower, but it's more so seen on a life orb tornadoes. We will see. I assume he's gonna go for knockoff. Gets rid of the leftovers on the heat train. And if he doesn't have superpower, he can U turn out. But if he has superpower, he can get some nice damage on his heat train. Heat train can just go for lava plume here because he doesn't. Other than Clefable, he doesn't have good switch ins. And Clefable, if the heat train has taunt, Clefable doesn't do anything back to the heat train. So it's pretty, a pretty free play to click lava plume because. 
The Kalia doesn't want to switch in. It's already burned. But we do see it's superpower. And it looks to be... Yeah. I think that's a salt that's torn, like I said earlier. And he gets the burn, so... Sabella getting lucky here. Gets the burn. Uh, uses Lava Pump twice, I think. And got the burn on Kelly on Tornadoes, which is uh, really annoying for Genesis 7. But it's Pokemon, so what can you say? It's a... <laughs> part of the game, I guess. So he's minus one now, which means the next superpower will do 35, but with the burn, the next superpower would only do half of that, so I don't think the next superpower will even kill this. So Bella does have potentially defog on his Latios, so... I don't think Sabella would have healing wish on his Clefable, but Heatran can still be kept around. Like, it can come in on a Jirachi, or it can still taunt the Clefable, it can... Still throw out a lava plume that comes out in Jirachi, like I said, and yeah. This is kind of tough for Genesis because if the. I mean, he can stay in technically because he can lift his next superpower and he can go for a lava plume again. And. The Tornadoes will get brought down super low as he turn lifts it thanks to the burn, and lava plume plus burn will bring this Tornadoes super low. So the Tornadoes is forced to hard switch our U-turn here. I don't think it's I don't think Sabella has any helmet users so he can click a U-turn. But the chip damage is not really worth it. It's only for momentum purposes, but I don't think Sabella will be switching out the trend. Yeah, he keeps on the trend, he's just gonna click Lava Plume again. So if he didn't get that burn, his U-turn would have either been dead or I would have to pivot out. So that is really annoying. Yeah, Clefable is gonna get plumed here, and I assume he's gonna go for Taunt. Predicting the Clefable from going for Thunder Wave or Moon. Uh, not Moon Blast, Thunder Wave, Softball, or Calm Mind. And I assume this Clefable is just gonna go for Moon Blast, predicting the Taunt exactly, and it does pick off the Heat Turn. I don't know if the crit mattered. It's four times resisted, but it might have not mattered. I mean, if it was a Spadeftrin, I could see that a Moon Blast only doing 2%, but. It probably didn't matter, like, come on, like, 3%, like, you can do 3% with a photons resistant move, right? But yeah, he can go into his... Scissor here. Let me see if this would be... I mean, Genesis's way of dealing with Scissor is basically, like, Medichim can do a lot of damage with High Jump Kick and take a hit from Scissor, and Kelly is a good check to Scissor. But other than that... Like, yeah, he has torn with potential heat wave, but he showed superpower, so I'm not sure if he has heat wave. Other than that, he seems a little bit weak to scissor, so I'm not sure this Clefable might actually have flamethrower. Because he seems a little weak to scissor. Like, I know he has Kelly, but that just gets chipped down, like, through, throughout the game. So, Sabella is either gonna click. If this is an SD Scissor, this is actually a big problem. Yeah, SD Scissor puts in a lot of work, holy flip. Because the Kelly is already at around half, if I recall correctly. I can't really look at the health bar, because it's just... Okay, it just goes for Bullet Plunge in case it has a fire move. And it does have a fire move, which is kind of to be expected, so... Nice play on Sabella's part, not going for Utona SD there. I mean, SD would have been fine to scare this out, but now you get the damage off and this is still taunted. Um, I mean, not that the taunt really matters because it would die to the next bullet punch. But he didn't really have a switch in, is what I'm trying to say, and he has to sack off the Clefable. I mean, he could have. Nah, he couldn't have really switched. He could have gone into Landris, yeah, but. That would have to take a bullet plunge plus rocks. And it's offensive Landris, so that would have. Yeah, Landris could have been the play. Like, he would have taken some damage, but it wouldn't have been the end of the world for Genesis 7. But yeah, Genesis basically got rid of the Scissor now. Like, it's at 12%, so it dies to rocks. Unless I don't see the Scissor healing on anything. Yeah, yeah, the Scissor is only death for us, so I don't see Sabella switching out at this point. I mean, he can switch out if he predicts an Earthquake. And go into his own Landris slash Aladi. 
But I think Genesis will just click off quick here, right? Because, yeah, exactly. You never click U-turn, though, because if the scissor switches out, it dies to rocks anyway. And if you click U-turn and the scissor stays in, it's just unnecessary annoying and your team has to take more damage. But he gets a free search in the lot, he's knowing this is probably Scarf Lock and the Earthquake. And he can either Defog or Roost. Because he goes for Surf, because that, that does nothing, so I don't know if that was the play. But, I mean, he chips down the Jirachi a little bit. Which can potentially bring it in range from... It's, it's definitely it should be in range from Specs Kettle or Hydro Pump, but yeah, we show the HP fire. So he basically sacked off his Latios to weaken the Jirachi down. Jirachi can still come in one more time on rocks. If he goes into Medicham, which is fine, he can get off a fake out here on whatever he wants. Uh, yeah, the Scarf Lando is gonna take a fake out to the face, and I assume it's gonna go for U turn on the following turn. Sabala so, can U turn out if the Medicham stays, and he can just go into Clefable because minus one Medicham. Won't do too much as um, Genesis 7 gets a crit there. Ooh, they did a lot. 44, good lord. So, yeah, Sabala got two Skull Burns so far, and now he got crit, so it was a little bit of Revenge Hex. I mean, crit is only 6% Skull. Lava Plume Burn, it was Lava Plume not Skull, is a 30% chance, so I guess crit is still less likely to happen. But yeah, he's U turning him for sure. If he has HP Ice, he will click that, but in, in Aura's Landris doesn't really carry HP Ice. So he U turns out on your opposing Landris, and Kelly gets a kill here. Um, I think I assume that he's gonna go Keldeo, and Genesis is just. Actually, the thing is, the Keldeo still has to take a Scarf off, but potentially. So maybe Clef is the better play, let me think. I mean, if he goes Keldeo here, he would have to take a hit if the Landris stays in. Um. But that would, put, that would potentially open up Genesis to getting swept by Sabella's Landros clicking Earthquake. Because he only has the Tornadoes left as a ground immunity if he sacks his Lando. So I think if Sabella goes into Keldeo that Genesis would sack off his Jirachi and then maybe go out into Torn or Medicham depending on how low, like depending on how low this Keldeo is. Now probably not Medicham. We'll just see. I guess Clefable is a fine play here too. Because like Landris can't really touch you and... You can just spam Moonblast so the Jirachi doesn't come in. Because if this Jirachi comes in on the turn that you go for common that would be annoying but yeah. He's just gonna be clicking Scald here. And I really don't think it's worth it for Genesis 7-2. I don't think it's worth it for him to let this uh, Landorus die. So I would just sack off my Jirachi. I mean, Jirachi can get off a Healing Wish. Potentially into Tornadoes, maybe. But Tornadoes has to be generated anywhere and it's still alive. So if it's played well, it can get its health back on its own. And Jirachi only Healing Wish is on Clefable, which, like. I don't think that's gonna happen that often that Jirachi comes out on Clef, so I'd probably sack the Jirachi here. And then you can see if he locks himself into Scald, you can then bring out your own Kaldeo. Or yeah, you can bring out your Tornadoes, but Tornadoes you would have to risk a Hurricane. But he does just go for Earthquake, get off the damage on the Kaldeo. I mean, this puts it in range from Secret Sword for sure, and potentially... I can't really calc right now because I'm rewatching the. Hmm, yeah, this is a bit annoying that I can't calc. I would know, like to know if Fake Out kills from here. I assume Fake Out doesn't kill. I assume it is like 25. Well, I already thought he would have sacked off his Jirachi there. I mean, I can understand the play somewhat, because Jirachi, if it comes down to Zabella trying to win with Clef late game, Jirachi can still be useful. I mean, he's gonna run the Kalk here, I assume Fakeout doesn't kill. So if he doesn't have Bullet Punch, I mean, he can go Fakeout into Bullet Punch if he has it, but I don't think he has it. So what is his play if he doesn't have Bullet Punch and Fakeout doesn't kill? I mean, I might go into Kaldeo here, because he doesn't have... Like, the Tornadoes would let the Clefable come in, right? 
So he would kind of have to predict between you turning Hurricane. I mean, I assume he would just go Hurricane if he goes Torn here. I think I might go on a Kelly here and click Hydro Pump because it, it's, if it's Specs Pump, um, yeah, it's Specs. I think from the damage it did to the Ladi, it should be able to like easily to it kill Fable. It should be able to kill this Kelly from 31, and it obviously kills the Landro. So as long as the pump connects, it should work out for Genesis. Oh yeah, there's no time on. Can I just record a 3 and 1 thing in the chat? I think FLCL was doing well, he's 2 0. Don't remember who also who played. Like the other people that played for Canada so far. So yeah, I think Genesis is on Metro, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll just put the, the countries in the thumbnail, you guys can see then. I mean, it might come down to Genesis uh, having to hit Hurricane or Pump. What we should do here? Yeah, he does go into Kelly. I think I would have made that play too. And like now, if you click Secret Sword, that's in the Clefable, so that's why I would click Pump here. I put on the timer finally turn 25 as he does lose the speed die and wow was that a roll that that I did not think that would kill okay Zoro Duck that said max roll speed die <laughs> it does 32 to 38.6 you guys can see it I'm really Poser the Kalk he wins the speed die and gets a max roll <laughs> so maybe Tornadoes would have been the better play I I did not consider that Ch Scald even had a chance to kill. Like, if I knew that he o then turn would have probably been a better play. Good lord. I blunder said how lucky can this dude get. <laughs> blunder said dude get outplayed and got double burn. I mean, double burn and the this is really annoying, I gotta be honest. I still think I kind of agree with Genesis 7's play because the odds of losing the speed tie and him getting the max roll with Scald, I think the odds are still more in Genesis 7's favor than going to Tornadus and hitting a Hurricane. I think. Cause like, what's the, what's the odds of getting a max roll? Like, I mean, yeah, I know Shodan runs down, so he might have been at 36 instead of 37, but like... No, it's 38, so he might have been at 37 instead of 38 is what I mean. But that still was a super high roll, like... Yeah, I think I would have made the same play. Like, now he's obviously fourth in the turn. And if he loses his Tornadus, he's um, just gonna lose to Scarf Landrus from Sabella's side. So, this is tough. The Sabella need this Kelio. After rocks, this Kelio might be in range from fake out. It would be so nice to be if I was able to calc right now. Like, if, if the Kelio is in range from fake out after rocks, it might be the play to stay in here. But I think it can go Clefable. If he predicts the Clefable, he's gonna U-turn here and get in his Jirachi. But even then, I still think Genesis is in a really tough position after losing his Speeder, getting the max roll against him. And what else happened? I mean, he did get one crit and he got double burned, so it was like Hex on both sides.
Yeah, I think it's in Sabella's favor now. Yeah, this Kelly still has value because even if it's in range from Medichim's fake out, Medichim can only go for fake out on the first turn that it comes out. So I would probably go in a clef now that I think a bit about this play. Or thought a bit about it. Um, yeah, like if you if you Genesis, you either go just say uh, I'm clicking Hurricane, I don't really care. Because I want like damage and whatever comes in, or if he stays in, I have to kill this Kalyu. As long as I hit, obviously, it's only 70%. I've seen some people run Air Slash even, not in tournament games, but some people on the ladder that don't want to miss Hurricane, they run Air Slash on their turn. But yeah, that flamethrower could fail early was clutch on the scissor, and I thought it would have brought him in a good position getting the scissor so low. I, at this point, if you U turn here and he stays in with the kill, you it's just over, so I think I would click. Oh, I forgot that burn does 12%. I completely forgot that burn does 12%. I'm comp I was in a Sun and Moon mind game and I thought he could lift the burn. So I was thinking I would just hurricane here because I was I thought he could lift the burn. But he obviously dies to burn. Okay, so this is a really tough spot for him. Because if he hurricanes he dies to burn. So he does use her and Sabala stays in. Knowing I mean yeah, if the I can understand now why he stays in because the torn would have died to burn. I completely forgot that. Because I thought you can just hurricane on the Clefable and then U-turn on next turn because in my mind it only did 6% because it's a Sun and Moon and Sun and Moon Burn got nerfed. But yeah, <laughs> my lord. Yeah, this game is over. Scott gets a kill here, he's gonna sack off his Medicham. I mean, this might even live one, but oh my god, blown away. Specs killed you too strong. Damn. I mean, I can understand why he U-turned anyway. I can understand why he U-turned anyway to get the Regenerator. So he basically wanted to get Regenerator, sack something off so we can go for Hurricane. Yeah, the Tornadus is now in range from U-turn. So Landris just clicks U-turn here and Sabella probably picks off the win. Because U-turn either picks off the Tornadus... Oh, he goes for knockoff. Okay, okay. He goes for knockoff. Knockoff was a clean sweep at that point. I don't know why I said U-turn. Yeah, in my head, I was thinking that Landris just runs Stone Age Earthquake and U-turn, I don't know. Knockoff is obviously... Um, a lot of the times, Scarf Landris runs Knockoff in last and Auras. And the Ensign Moon Sc Scarf Lando is not really seen. He said wins a win is a win, I don't care about hexing you, my team needs a win. And he says you are terrible, holy shit. Man just going in. And Jen P was right. Holy fuck. When did he say that? And Jen P said, don't bring me in this. What the fuck? Yeah, like I was about to say, World Cup is really bringing out like, like the salt and like, it's like really heated up. Like, especially on the, the other day between that Solon and Asuya game. I was also a little bit like heated up too much at the end there, like. I can understand why Asuya had to take the win for his team, <laughs> but let, let's not talk about that. But yes, yeah, Sabella does pick off the win. And yeah, I think he's on Team Canada because they were t talking about Team Canada in the in the chat. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, this is, this was quite an interesting game. I feel like Genesis. Uh, Genesis probably should have won this game, but it's Pokemon, what can you say, like... It's not that unlikely to get two Lava Plume burns. The the, the only thing that was really unlikely was the <laughs> winning a speed that would kill you and getting the high roll or max roll. Hey, beyond the chat, you shouldn't even have called it Hex, you should have just say one, just say one GG and leave. 
I am not 100% sure which team they guys are on. I will check that, put that in the put that in the thumbnail so you guys will see. I mean, most of you guys will know anyway if you follow World Cup. And it was still an interesting game. And I know that we have... I'm recording this on Wednesday. Because it's like, um, you guys can see here. This is my recording from yesterday. I think it's Wednesday today, right? I'm completely... Yeah, it's Wednesday. And we have a lot of cool games coming out later. We have um, snow playing. I will record that. Maybe with my boy Dennis. And we have. I think we have some other games, but I don't really remember. I'll check. I'll check later on. Thank you guys for watching. And yeah, let me know if you even want to see Auras. I know some people prefer Sun and Moon, but it's World Cup, right? It's World Cup. And if I'm online, why not record Auras too? I think this is like this. Is it the second or the third Auras game? I think it's the third Auras game that I brought you guys so far for World Cup. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Dockridge signing out. See you next time.